Corey, take it away. Well, thank you so much, Chrissy. I feel like that's a perfect introduction for the topic of today's class. Um, I'm going to get to do what I love with all of you. Thanks for attending. Thank you for taking time out of your morning, your afternoon. Let us know where you're joining from. So happy to see all of you here. And hopefully we can answer a lot of the questions that you have around SkinCeuticals, around products in general. But today is all about SkinCeuticals one. Oh, one, I have a presentation to share with you. So let me go ahead and get this going. Okay. Perfect. So like I said, today we're going to cover and go over and answer the top questions that we get at SkinCeuticals about our products. And I know this is a class that you all have been waiting for and wanting. There are always so many questions. So what we're gonna cover today, I'm just gonna give you a quick agenda. Number one, how to choose an antioxidant. Number two, how to choose corrective serums and moisturizers. Number three, how to layer your products as part of a morning and evening routine. Super hot question right there. Next, we're gonna talk about how um, products compare. I know we've launched quite a few products this year. One of the top questions that we get as a brand and what I get as an educator is, what's the difference between this and that? Do I need both? What should I use? Help, right? And lastly, uh, we're going to end with, as Chrissy mentioned, a live question and answer session to help answer any specific questions that you may have. But again, like she said, feel free to use the Q&A widget. We have SkinCeuticals estheticians and pros on the chat here and ready to answer any specific questions unique to you and your routine. So please take advantage of that. And again, if um, we don't answer that question during the class, we will have time at the end for you to just ask me. So <laughs> lots of questions and topics we're going to cover today. But before we dive into the meat of today's presentation and class, I have a question for all of you. I just want to take a quick temperature check. So we have a poll that's going to pop up on the screen. Feel free to answer. I want to know how confident do you feel about your current skincare routine? Whether you use SkinCeuticals, whether you use no SkinCeuticals, uh, I want to know, do you feel super confident? It. Are you still learning or are you unsure about it? Let's see. Take some time and put your answer in. Okay. 16% of you feel super confident. 66% of you are still learning but you like where you're going and 18% are unsure. That's amazing. I'm a lifelong learner. I'm still learning, right? There's always new things to learn. So we're going to do some of that learning today together. So let's go ahead and get started. If you use SkinCeuticals, you know that we are a medical aesthetic skincare brand. We are the number one medical aesthetic skincare brand uh, worldwide, which is really awesome. And our mission is to improve skin health. Um, and dedicated to this simple promise, we pr promise to provide advanced skincare backed by science. So our products are our brand uh, is born from decades of scientific research with pivotal breakthroughs in antioxidants, and we are dispensed by medical aesthetic skincare professionals worldwide. So that includes uh, plastic surgeons, that includes dermatologists, and that includes estheticians in medical spas. So we formulate to prevent future damage, correct current signs of aging or concerns, and protect healthy skin. In fact, these are our three main pillars. So whether you are just getting started with us or you are a pro, I just want to remind everybody of our pillars and how we categorize our products. And if you are new to the brand, we always recommend at least starting with one product from each of these categories. So one product from prevent, one product from correct, and one product from the protect category. So our prevent category houses all of our antioxidants. These products are formulated to prevent future damage. Our antioxidants include our vitamin C serums, as well as resveratrol BE, our nighttime antioxidant. Next, we have our corrective category of products, and this houses all of our corrective serums, treatments, actives, creams, moisturizers, all of that lives here under this umbrella. Now, these products contain active ingredients, right? And they're going to solve for specific concerns. You may use more than one. We have a lot of fans that use multiple corrective serums, multiple corrective creams, and definitely switch those out as their skin changes or even with the season. So I'm going to teach you how to do that a little bit later. Later. 
And then lastly, we have our protect category, which is going to house all of our sunscreens. So our SPF formula is super important to end a routine to protect healthy skin, to protect you against UV rays, and of course, to protect against free radical damage. Um, so prevent, correct, and protect. And to make it easy, all of these products have a little blue like square on them where you're going to see what that is. So if you're still kind of confused, okay, CE Ferulic, it says prevent. This is my antioxidant. I know what it's doing, right? So it kind of makes it easy for you to decipher which product is what and where it lies under our um, pillars, right? But uh, starting off with one of the most frequently asked questions that we get under our prevent category is which antioxidant is right for me, right? We have so many products within each category. How do you know which one is gonna be best for you? Which one should you use? We're gonna start with our antioxidant serums, right? So our vitamin C serums um, are patented, they're potent, they're proven, they're backed by over 30 years of academic research, and they are recommended by over 10,000 clinics worldwide. So choosing one is really going to depend on your unique skin type as well as your primary skin concerns. But I really want to demystify each one of these. Um, and first off, I want to remind all of you that all of these are vitamin C serums. So our three best sellers and what you're probably very familiar with our CE Ferulic, Floritin CF, and Silamarin CF. Now, these three all feature pure vitamin C in the form of L ascorbic acid, and they also feature ferulic acid. So, you have two antioxidants to start off with. Each one, depending on the formula, is also going to offer an additional antioxidant to solve a specific skin concern. So, this is where we can get kind of specific and unique and customize and choose the right one for what our skin needs. And you can definitely switch and move that around, right? So let's go ahead and start with CE Ferulic. CE Ferulic is our bestseller. It's our most awarded. It features vitamin C, ferulic acid, and vitamin E. Now, vitamin E is an antioxidant, right? So you get triple antioxidant protection here, but it plays an important role in supporting the entire formula as well as helping to moisturize the skin as well. So I love to recommend this for those that may be on the normal to dry spectrum um, and are concerned with aging, fine lines, wrinkles, and really getting that antioxidant protection in the skin. Next, we have Floritin CF. So Floritin CF features vitamin C, ferulic acid, and fluoritin. So you have, again, three antioxidants in this formula. Fluoritin is an antioxidant that's derived um, or found naturally in like apple tree leaves or the bark of apple trees. And what this antioxidant does is improves the appearance of discoloration um, or uneven skin tone. So if you are someone that is prone to discoloration or you have active discoloration you're trying to treat, then fluoritin CF might be a better option for you because you still get the vitamin C and the ferulic acid, but you have that additional antioxidant to support your concern, which is discoloration right? So really beautiful formula for that without um, skipping out on the benefits of the anti-aging and the protection. Next, we have Silamarin CF, which features vitamin C and ferulic acid, just like the other two, but it also includes salicylic acid and silamarin. Salicylic acid we know is great for treating acne, and silamarin is a powerful plant antioxidant derived from the milk thistle plant. So uh, milk thistle benefits for the skin. Actually, it helps to um, combat and reduce oil oxidation. So this is really great for oily skin types. And it also helps to reduce blemish formation. So really great for those that are suffering from active acne. I love to recommend this for aging skin that is oily and prone to blemishes. Now you can definitely mix, uh, I would say like swap between each of these. A lot of our customers like to use maybe one in the spring and summer, and then one in the fall and winter, or you can definitely switch it out as your skin changes. Maybe you didn't have discoloration last year, but this year, especially after the summer, maybe you're starting to see some spots come through and you wanna treat that more comprehensively, then maybe instead of CE Ferulic, you try Floritin CF for three months, and then you can switch back to CE Ferulic. So please feel free to be intuitive with your vitamin C serum. However, there's no need to layer multiple, right? 
because remember, they all have pure vitamin C and ferulic acid and then that additional antioxidant to provide synergistic benefits to protect your skin from damaging free radicals, but also solve for visible concerns, right? Now, these are our vitamin C serums, our daytime vitamin C serums that you apply once daily every day as part of a morning routine. You only need about three to four drops, I would say four to five max, into the palm of your hand. And then we like to kind of press and, and spread onto the face, the neck, and the chest. Your skin shouldn't be like sopping, wet, glistening with vitamin C serum. You just want to get it on the skin, right? Then you can follow with the rest of your routine as normal. We're going to get into that in just a second. But definitely less is more when applying SkinCeuticals formulas. They are super potent so pre to prevent any pilling um, or just like not a nice experience. Try applying less of your formula than you normally would if you feel like your skin is feeling like not so great after applying your products, right? So that's kind of like a huge um, like mind blowing moment, right? When I talk about how much you should actually be applying four to five drops for the full face, neck and chest, right? And use that kind of like, I like to imagine I'm spreading butter on toast almost. So I'm just kind of like pressing it on and kind of massaging it and pressing it in at the same time all over the skin. Now to apply it, I like to, and I'm just going to show you what I like to do. Everyone is different. It's definitely based on your preference, but this is how we recommend applying. Take your palm and cup it take your dropper and I just count one, two, three, and four. And then I like to press and do that spreading motion all over. So I'll press, 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 and then spread like butter all over the face, neck, and the chest. Anything left over, take it to the hands, take it wherever you have um, skin showing for the day, right? Now we do have one more antioxidant in this category, and that is our nighttime antioxidant, resveratrol BE. Resveratrol BE is ideal for normal to dry skin types, and those that are really looking for extra anti-aging support support. Um, this formula is really beautiful. We call it like the sleeping beauty serum. You do apply it at nighttime. It really is going to help to improve the appearance of skin radiance and elasticity overnight. You wake up to really glowing skin. It's great to address blotchiness. It helps basically to support the skin's natural antioxidant defenses. So antioxidants are just like ravaging every cell really, right? Internally and external, internal aggressors and external aggressors produce free radicals. And the problem is when we're overloaded with them and it's really easy to be overloaded, especially in this day and age, so many stressors all around us, right? So resveratrol is really kind of like that surefire way to make sure that we're supporting our skin's natural defense against antioxidants uh, or against uh, free radicals, I'm sorry, and also helping to improve elasticity, firmness, radiance, all of that. So if you haven't tried resveratrol and you're kind of looking for extra anti-aging support, you're starting to see dullness, loss of elasticity, your skin just doesn't feel as glowy or bright, resveratrol BE might be a nice easy way to achieve radiant skin while you sleep. Now, um, other questions that we get a lot about our antioxidants are what about the scent, right? And I do want to cover that. So we don't add any synthetic fragrance to our vitamin C serums or our antioxidants in general. So what you're smelling likely is the natural scent of the triple antioxidant um, synergistic blend in that formula since we don't add that fragrance. So it does dissipate after a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds a minute, you won't smell it. Um, and I just like to say it smells like science. So I know all the benefits that I'm getting with the application of the product. So I don't mind it um, at all. Uh, next question that we get a lot about products in general, but vitamin C specifically, is when am I going to see results, right? So you know that we do clinic, cl clinical testing, excuse me, for all of our formulas on real patients, on real skin. So after 12 weeks is usually a good marker where we can start to see significant results and changes in the skin. I always recommend taking a before picture whenever you start something and then being consistent after 12 weeks, take another photo. It's really hard to notice sometimes when we see our skin every day, the changes that are happening. Not all of them are super visible but over time, the skin does get better, especially with vitamin C antioxidants. Uh, the next question that we get about vitamin C serums is, is it safe for sensitive skin? Uh, now, if you do have sensitive skin, we do recommend CE Ferulic. CE Ferulic is great if you have sensitive skin. However, if you have very reactive skin or you know that you're sensitive specifically to vitamin C in the form of L-ascorbic acid, we have another option for you. And it's actually called 
Serum 10 AOX Plus. This is an introductory formula and really great for those reactive skin types that can't tolerate normal vitamin C serums, right? But probably the most asked question when it comes to our vitamin C formulas is about the color range and the formula itself. So I definitely want to highlight this and address this for all of you that are watching and kind of just debunk this myth, which is really big in the vitamin C kind of world, right? Um, I do also want to remind you that Vitamin C serums really as a category we've pioneered. Uh, our founding scientist, Dr. Sheldon Pinnell, discovered how to formulate the first ever topical, topical vitamin C serum properly. He patented uh, that process, that formulation process, and it's still a process that we use to this day to formulate all of our vitamin C serums. They're patented, they're potent, and they're proven. And I'm here to assure you that it is normal for SkinCeuticals vitamin C serums to darken after opening due to air and light exposure. L-ascorbic acid, which is pure vitamin C, it's vitamin C in its purest form, is super unstable and notoriously difficult to get into the skin. But because we have followed that patented formulation process, we call it the three P's, right? It's a specific percentage at a specific pH and a specific purity or potency that creates this perfect formula that is able to be bioavailable to the skin and absorb and optimally work in the skin and protect the skin. So this is how we formulate. Uh, color change is normal with our serums. I can't speak for other serums, um, but I can speak for ours. And our clinical testing does show that the formula remains potent and active uh, to the last drop for up to 36 months. So if you get a formula and maybe it's a little bit darker than your last formula, that is totally normal. Your formula is still active. It's still working and it's still going to give you that antioxidant benefit. So hopefully that take eases a lot of your minds. Um, I know there's a lot of information out there, but definitely go straight to the source when you have questions about about formula and efficacy because the way that you formulate something and how you formulate something and the science behind that um, really makes a big difference. So next I want to talk about uh, one of our largest categories and that's our correct categories where all of our serums and creams and actives are housed. So we have um, quite a few products to choose from, and this can be definitely a confusing category, especially when we start getting into like the three or more product <laughs> routine, right? We have four, five, six. I know people that use 12 products, you know, and sometimes it can, it can be very confusing, especially when we're launching new formulas. I can imagine you're thinking, wait, do I need that? Where does that go? How do I use it? So many questions, right? But when it comes to selecting these products in this category, there are three simple things that I want all of you to remember and keep in mind and consider, right? And so those three things really are, what is your skin type? What is your primary skin concern or skin concerns, right? Because there could be more than one. And then lastly, what is your lifestyle? So what does all of that mean? Um, so as far as skin type, we pretty much know you can be dry, oily, combination, or balanced slash normal. Um, I definitely do not have normal skin. <laughs> I feel like it is oily. Sometimes it's combination. Sometimes it's dehydrated. It uh, has a lot of different uh, expressions, right, depending on a lot of different things. So skin type can change, right? It can change with age. It can change with so many factors, but try to narrow your skin type down. Um, next would be skin concerns. Now, skin concerns and your skin care objectives are going to vary from person to person. So whether you're concerned with fine lines and wrinkles, loss of elasticity, discoloration, redness, blotchiness, um, your skin looks dull, your skin feels thin, crepey, whatever that is, identify those things. Write those down, right? What are the things that you are concerned with right now? And then lastly, what is your lifestyle like? Like, how active are you? What is the climate in which you live in? And this is probably the most important that we tend to overlook a lot, but I always ask, what is your overall preference? What are you willing to do? How many products realistically are you willing to apply? Um, are you lazy with your skincare in the morning? Are you lazy with your skincare at night, right? I'm definitely a lazy in the morning person. At nighttime, I'll do the 13 steps. In the morning, I'm lucky if I get a cleanse in, uh, but I always will apply my vitamin C antioxidant. That's one thing I will never skip. My resolution for next year, I know we're not there yet, but 
is to definitely get more adamant with my a comprehensive with my morning routine. But it's just I know myself, right? Uh, so think about those things, and then we can figure out what is going to be the best layering process and best routine to get you uh, the best results, right? So think about that. Simmer on that for a little bit. If you have specific questions, drop them again in the Q&A. We're super happy to answer those. But again, this is what you're going to think about when you're choosing corrective products. Now, when we get into the four, five, six product routine and regimen, we have to think about how we're layering these products, right? Because layering in the correct order matters. So this takes us into our next top question and... It's how do I layer? How do I layer my products for morning? And how do I layer my products for evening? So layering your products in the morning um, is not going to be that much different than layering, layering your products in the evening, but there are going to be some caveats. So I do, I do want to highlight those separately. So let's talk about the morning routine first. Layering your skincare products in the correct order is really essential for maximizing their effectiveness and achieving your desired result, right? So we always want to start the morning with a cleansing, uh, a cleanser and a toner if you tone. Toners are not super necessary. Uh, however, if you feel like your skin needs a toner, you need to remove excess dead skin cells, definitely reach for a toner. Or maybe you use an essence. Essences help to add um, actives in versus toners kind of remove, right? So definitely person by person basis. If you use a toner in essence, it's going to go on after your cleanser. So cleanser and toner is going to be your first step. Um, I always recommend cleansing in the morning. It's not, I wouldn't say it's like a golden rule, but I recommend cleansing in the morning just because at nighttime, um, we're sweating, we're producing some oil, uh, we want to go ahead and start the day with a clean slate so the rest of our products can absorb more efficiently and effectively to work smarter and not harder, right? You don't want that product fighting through excess oil or sweat or grime to get into the skin, right? So we help our skin out a little bit, give it a good cleanse. You can use something maybe a little bit more gentle in the morning. Um, maybe you just go in with a toner, totally up to you. After that, you're going to follow with your vitamin C antioxidant. Then you're going to layer any serums in order of thinnest to thickest in terms of consistency. So if you have more than one corrective serum, layer from thinnest to thickest in terms of viscosity of that formula. The thinner ones first, then working your way up to the thicker ones. After that, you will apply your face, uh, your eye and face creams or moisturizers um, for your specific concern. Now, this is a um, also a little caveat here. So depending on your skin type and the time of year, for example, if you have oily or blemish prone skin, you may skip a dedicated face moisturizer in the morning. For example, hydrating B5 gel can take the place of a moisturizer and a serum. It's really beautiful, just easy, lightweight option. So definitely play it by ear and give your skin what it needs, depending on that time of year, depending on how your skin is feeling. If you have three, four corrective serums and you just feel like applying a thicker cream is going to be too much, skip that and go straight to your sunscreen, right? And that might change from day to day. I know I'm sometimes more dry than I am other days for whatever reason. Could be lifestyle, could be stress, etc. the weather, whatever I did the night before, you know, things like that. So play that by ear. But always, 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 you want to end your morning routine with sunscreen. So that really is going to protect your skin, protect your investment, uh, and really protect from the UVA and UVB rays. There is one more caveat I want to cover, and that's with cell cycle catalyst, which I have a whole slide dedicated on cell cycle ca catalyst that we're going to get into. But cell cycle catalyst is one of our newer launches this year. It's an anti-aging um, exfoliating serum. You only apply it once daily, either in the morning morning or the evening. If you apply it in the morning, it's going to go on after cleansing and toning and before your antioxidant. So I know we always say vitamin C first, right after cleansing and toning, but cell cycle catalyst is going to go on right before that. And the reason being is because it is that kind of thin, it has a, a viscosity, like it's like water basically. So we want to get that on first, then apply C, your uh, vitamin C serum. And in clinical studies, when we paired C cell cycle catalyst, that's a tongue twister with CE ferulic, for example, we saw that it enhanced the antioxidant benefits of CE ferulic. So clinical studies there with with those products layered together showed really great results in amplifying your environmental protection. So if you have it, try applying it before your vitamin C serum as part of your morning routine. Now let's get into nighttime. So nighttime, again, 
is going to look very similar uh, with a few differences. Now, cleansing and toning, you're going to start with at the end of the day. I love to recommend a double cleanse. If you're not doing a double cleanse, I would recommend trying it. You might see a big difference in your skin. So double cleansing just means that you're cleansing twice. Um, you can use the same cleanser to do that, or you can use maybe an oil cleanser and then go in with a foaming cleanser, however you want to do it. But the first cleanse is really going to remove the day makeup, um, sunscreen, basically everything. And then you're going to go in with the second cleanse to actually clean the skin. Following that, you're going to go ahead and apply your nighttime antioxidant. So if you are using resveratrol BE, this is where it would go. After that, you're going to layer any actives, right? So this is a little bit different than your morning routine. So when I say actives, I'm talking about maybe glycolic, um, glycolic 10 renew overnight, uh, retinol, things like that. That's going to go here. Then you will follow with your serums in order from thinnest to thickest in terms of consistency. And then you're going to end with your eye and face creams. Now at nighttime, you may want to reach for something a little bit thicker, a little bit more nourishing to really hydrate the skin deeply while you, while you sleep. But I do recommend a moisturizer for all skin types at nighttime for sure. So this would be your nighttime. And I would say, I didn't mention this, but if you have any topical, um, prescription medications from the dermatologist, that's always going to go on first after cleansing and toning. You always put those, those medications on first, then follow the rest of the routine as we've laid out for you. Okay. So another little caveat there. I hope you feel a little bit more comfortable with how to apply um, your products. And I hope this information is kind of sinking in a little bit and you already feel just so excited to reach for your routine, but we're going to go ahead and cover product comparisons now. And so another a uh, big, big, big question category that we get is like this or that, right? It's only natural to compare products and decide whether you're using the right one, right? Or do you need to add something new? So let's start with our two newest launches. We're getting lots of questions about these individually and how to use them together. And that is PTOX and HA Intensifier Multiglycan. This comes up at least once a day for me, but I love both of these individually. I super love them together, but it's also going to depend on your skin needs um, and, of course, what you're already currently using in the routine. So really quickly, PTOX is a peptide serum, H Intensifier Multi-Glycan Serum. Glycan is a corrective hyaluronic acid serum, right? So we already have those two differences there. PTOX is uh, going to target expression wrinkles on the surface of the skin, as well as reveal glass skin radiance. It features an advanced peptide complex, and it's also inspired the re by the results of neurotoxin injections. So really beautiful for nine types of expression lines on the surface of the skin that we get from making repetitive muscle movements. It's super lightweight in texture and super layerable. You apply it twice daily. Now, HA Intensifier Multiglycan is a newly reformulated product. The original, which a lot of you know as HA Intensifier, got an upgrade, right? So we have new and better ingredients for even better results. This formula gives the skin multidimensional volume. So what it does is it stimulates glycans, multiple types of glycans. Hyaluronic acid is a glycan, but we also have other glycans in the skin that are responsible for structural volume and giving our skin that youthful bounce, right? So this stimulates multiple glycans in the skin. It also helps to plump and hydrate and visibly fill fine lines and define facial contours. It does this with three different types of hyaluronic acid as well as that glycan technology that includes ingredients like proxylane, a postbiotic ferment, and additional ingredients like licorice root. Now, this formula is more than a hyaluronic acid serum. It actually helps to preserve a hyaluronic acid in the skin, which depletes naturally as we age, and it's focused more on loss of facial volume and plumpness, right? It also hydrates the skin very deeply. This formula is lightweight, um, super layerable as well, and has a fresher and lighter feel than its predecessor, HA Intensifier. Now, individually, I would say if you're more concerned with surface wrinkles on the skin and your skin is feeling lackluster, I would say go with uh, PTOX. This also complements those neurotoxin injections to maintain um, and amplify, right? So you don't have to get neurotoxin injections, but if you do, this is a great complement to that. It's designed to work on its own. Then we have HA Intensifier, which is more for that youthful plump and volume. So if you notice your skin is more like sagging, losing its plumpness, you losing its youthfulness, maybe this is something you opt for instead. However, if you're concerned with both of these things, you can use them together. You're going to go ahead and apply PTOX first, and then you'll follow 
with HA intensifier multi-glycan twice daily as part of your anti-aging routine. So you can definitely use them both as a power pair in your anti-aging regimen. Next, I want to cover our hyaluronic acid serums. So coming off of the piggyback of HA Intensifier Multi-Glycan, we have an entire collection of hyaluronic acid serums. We have um, Retexturing Activator, Hydrating B5 Gel, Phytocorrective Gel, and HA Intensifier Multi-Glycan. Now, lots of questions we get around the four of these products. So many of you probably have more than one, have used more than one, but do you need more than one? Probably not. So let's break down each one of these and what their role is and who they're for. So starting with Retexturing Activator, Retexturing Activator is an exfoliating hydrating serum. This has hyaluronic acid. All of these have hyaluronic acid, but they also offer additional ingredients to target specific concerns. I would recommend Retexturing Activator for somebody that wants exfoliation and hydration in one step. Uh, somebody that has maybe more of that sensitive or sensitized skin, it's super gentle. It diminishes the appearance of surface fine lines. It smooths skin, improves radiance, all of that. Um, I love to use this intermittently in my routine. Like if I'm taking a break with retinol and I want something that's still going to help um, get rid of surface dead skin cells, but in a very gentle way and also infuse hydration, I might reach for retexturing activator on my off night, right? So different ways you can use this. Maybe in the summer, you still want to hide, you still want to exfoliate, but you don't want to use some actives. Retexturing activator is a great option for that. Next, we have hydrating B5 gel. I think hydrating B5 gel, everyone can have in their vanity. I feel it's like that product that does it all, right? It is so good to amplify hydration in the skin in a very lightweight way. It's oil-free. It won't clog the pores. Great for oily and acne skin types, um, but all skin types, right? So I love to apply it before my moisturizer to really beef up the moisture or hydration. I'll put a drop or two in my moisturizer during the winter to just add more um, hydration to the mix. It has hyaluronic acid and vitamin B5 to smooth the skin. Just like a no-fuss hyaluronic acid serum. If you're new to hyaluronic acid, you don't know where to start, hydrating B5 gel is what I would recommend. I also like to just put this on all the dry areas of like my body. Like I'll put it on my cuticles, on my hands, on my elbows. Like it's so good. And I love how it feels. So I love hydrating B5 gel. I actually use that in the morning. And then at night I reach for something a little bit more comprehensive. Now hydrate, um, to hydrate and soothe, we have our phytocorrective gel. If you have redness prone skin, blotchiness, if your skin just feels reactive, then I would recommend phytocorrective gel as your hyaluronic acid serum. It has hyaluronic acid and a phytobotanical blend to calm and soothe redness. It cools skin surface temperature. It strengthens the skin barrier with that phyto uh, blend, which is really beautiful. And it just feels so good and soothing. My fiance uses this day and night. He loves it. He has super red skin, super fair skin. And this really calms his skin down while hydrating. So it can also be used as a moisturizer as well. Um, really, really lovely product. Next, we have our HA Intensifier Multi-Glycan, which we just talked about. So I hope all of you remember what that um, serum does, but it's going to hydrate and plump. It's our most comprehensive, our most active, our most corrective. So if you're concerned with aging, loss of volume, loss of plumpness, um, this is where it would put you. So HA Intensifier Multi-Glycan is what you would reach for. You can forget about the other ones, but you can definitely layer multiple. If you just like the way it feels and you want more hydration, you can layer them all if you wish, <laughs> but definitely no need to have all of them in your routine. But of course you can separate them, use one a specific time of year, maybe use one in the morning, one in the evening. You can totally play around and customize your routine for sure. Next, we have our two top selling corrective creams. These are anti-aging moisturizers. We have AGE Interrupter Advanced versus Triple Lipid Restore 242. Which one is best for me? What's the difference? Let's get into it. So HA or AGE Interrupter Advanced addresses fine lines, deep wrinkles, skin crepiness, and thinning, while lipid, Triple Lipid Restore 242 addresses uh, loss of facial fullness, rough skin texture, and dullness. I would say if you are concerned with wrinkles, anti-aging, and collagen decline, I would recommend AGE Interrupter Advanced for you. If you're more concerned with um, dullness, loss of moisture, your skin just feels chronically dry, dehydrated, rough, then I would say Triple Lip and Restore 242 is what you should reach for. 
Now, the differences between the two, number one, in texture, AGE Interrupter Advanced has a kind of whipped balmy texture, and then Triple Lipid is more like an ultra-rich, silky cream. Um, you could use them both if you wanted to. I have lots of uh, lots of patients that like to use both of these, and they layer them for morning and evening. So it's totally up to you. Uh, you can do that if you want, but you don't need to. I would identify your primary concern. Is it collagen decline? Is it those deep wrinkles? Or is it just that rough surface texture? You feel like your lipids are depleted, your skin barrier is impacted. Then I would say triple lipid. Again, you can switch these out. Maybe use you, you use one in the morning and one in the evening, or one for spring and summer and one for um, fall and winter, totally up to you. I will say, if you are using a retinol, we love to add triple lipid restore 242 on after the retinol because it's clinically proven to support the skin um, and help to combat any of those retinol scaries and really support the skin barrier. So two different things that it addresses. You have collagen decline, um, glycation that happens in the skin from excess sugar that breaks down our collagen. To address that, you want AGE interrupter advanced and then the loss of lipids, which decline as we age, um, skin barrier support, things like that. You can address that with triple lipid restore 242. But of course, also your preference. If you like one over the other, use that one, right? <laughs> And then lastly, we have Cell Cycle Catalyst. So Cell Cycle Catalyst launched this year. Um, when it launched, it was received very well. Uh, everybody was super excited about this product. However, it is a very unique product in addition to our portfolio. Uh, there was a lot of confusion about the product, where it lives, what it does, how to use it, right? So let's go ahead and recap. Cell Cycle Catalyst is an anti-aging exfoliating serum. You use, you use it once daily, either in the morning or the evening. So only one time a day you have to apply it, which is great. It is also clinically proven to boost anti-aging results of any skincare routine. It is also uh, great to prep the skin before chemical peels. If you get a chemical peel, we are deep in chemical peel season right now. If you haven't gotten a chemical peel, I highly recommend um, just to give your skin a beautiful glow. And there are so many different types of chemical peels that literally you go in, get a little peel and you leave. Nobody notices you're not red. It's it's totally fine, right? So Cell Cycle Catalyst is great to kind of amplify the results of a treatment like that if you do opt for those types of in-office treatments. So really great to integrate into that routine. But on its own, it helps to uh, stimulate skin barrier renewal, maintain skin optimal hydration, and help to boost cellular turnover and vitality. Again, this is going to different differentiate cell cycle catalyst from the rest of our exfoliating type of products. So let's compare it to glycolic 10 renew overnight first. Glycolic 10 features glycolic acid. Um, glycolic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid. It is the smallest of the alpha hydroxy acids, which means it travels deeper into the skin to exfoliate more. Uh, glycolic acid helps to promote glow. It's really great to add hydration into the skin while exfoliating. It's a great option for sun damage and visible signs of aging, dullness in the skin. Now, retexturing activator, we talked about that earlier. This is a hyaluronic acid serum that also gently exfoliates dead surface skin cells. Great option for sensitive or sensitized skin that also needs extra hydration while removing the dead surface debris. Now, compared to a toner, uh, very different, right? So, uh, toners are definitely more like liquid skincare products, right? They remove uh, re dead surface skin cells or remove excess cleanser. They're primarily made to remove excess oil, things like that. They can combine a combination of ingredients. So if you use a toner, you would tone first, then apply your, your cell cycle catalyst after. You can still use those together in the routine. And then we have retinol. So retinol creams we know are an effective skincare solution uh, to increase cell renewal, promote cellular turnover, and reduce visible signs of aging. So the issue with retinol, not everybody can tolerate it retinol. Um, some people like to take breaks with retinol, uh, things like that. And, and you can only use retinol at night, right? Whereas Cell Cycle Catalyst, you could use in the morning if you want, then use your retinol at night. However, you can also use, as we mentioned earlier, Cell Cycle Catalyst to boost the results of any of your routine. So in my mind, the perfect um, candidate for Cell Cycle Catalyst is a few people. Number one, it's for anyone that cannot tolerate um, active exfoliants, 
if you can't tolerate glycolic acid, if you can't tolerate retinol, if you want something a little stronger than retexturing activator, then I would say cell cycle catalyst is going to be your bread and butter right there to exfoliate dead surface skin cells, to really help to improve glow and texture and discoloration in one easy step. Number two, it's for the person that has everything, right? They can use retinol every single night. They can use glycolic. They can use it all. Their skin is resilient. They need something more. They want to take their routine to the next level. <laughs> then cell cycle catalyst would be something to add into the routine. I would even say add it before your retinol to give it a boost, right? So you can definitely do that. If you use it at night, apply it before your retinol, give your skin a boost. Um, and then three is for somebody that, again, is prepping their skin to get the most out of their in-office uh, treatment, their chemical peel. So you would use it maybe one to 15 days ahead um, for those professional treatments to really prep and prime the skin for maximum results. So I hope this makes a little bit more sense um, as far as what Cell Cycle Catalyst is. It truly is a unique product and everything is in the name. It's a catalyst. It really takes everything to the next level. It reveals really smooth skin um, and really kind of just boosts everything in the routine. Again, you don't have to use it every day if you don't want to. You can kind of play around with it. Um, use it on nights that you are taking a break from the rest of your actives. Or again, maybe you use it in the morning and then at night you use your retinol or your glycolic or whatever it may be, right? But have some fun with it. It's a really great product. And that's it. Oh my gosh, we made it to the end. So I think this is a good amount of time for live Q&A. I hope that some of your questions got answered in the Q&A by our estheticians, but I want to hear from you. If you have any specific questions on the presentation, on specific products, I think we should get into it, Chrissy. Well, we have a lot, so I think it's a great idea. Um, yeah. So uh, rapid fire real quick. We had kind of a couple come through in the last like 30 seconds or so. Um, Heather is actually, I'm going to ask Claire's question first because Heather's leads into other questions. Okay. So Claire is just wondering if you could just like very high level go through your toners. Yeah, definitely. So we have three toners. We have equalizing toner, conditioning toner, and LHA toner. Each of them are going to have varying degrees of alpha hydroxy acids and or beta hydroxy acids. So I would say if you want our maximum strength toner, LHA toner, it's a combination of both AHAs and BHAs, great for oily skin, congested skin, or acne prone skin. I love that toner. It is so good. Next, we have our equalizing toner, which has AHAs in it. Um, very beautiful to just gently remove dead surface skin cells. And again, conditioning toner as well. AHAs in the formula to remove dead surface skin cells, but also has a little bit of glycerin to hydrate at the same time. So um, take a look at each one individually, and you can go ahead and see if you want to add a toner in, which one stands out to you, which one would be best for you. But yeah, definitely feel free to, to check those out. They're all great. Uh, Claire asked if you can use Cell Cycle Catalyst, I'm sorry, along with a retinol. Yes, definitely. So I think we covered in the, in the slide, but there are a few different ways to do this. Um, Cell cycle catalysts can be used in place of a retinol if your skin can't tolerate a retinol um, on alternating nights, maybe if you want to kind of give your skin a little bit of a cycle uh, or in addition to. So if you want to use them together, apply your cell cycle catalyst first, then your retinol, and it'll really boost the effects of the retinol. Awesome. Let's see. There's there's kind of just a lot of questions about retinol. So maybe yeah. uh, I just have you address like... You, like you're using a retinol at night, like reiterate what, what is the order of operations there? Yeah, definitely. So retinol at nighttime is going to go on during your active step. So you would cleanse and tone if you tone, then you would follow with your active. So apply your retinol. Um, I like to take a pea size amount. I'll put it into the palm of sorry, my palm, <laughs> my fingertip. And then I like to massage my fingertips together. And then what I do is I press it into the larger parts of my face. I get really itchy when I apply it too close to like right here, my corners of my nose or like above my lip. I get really itchy here. So I like to avoid those areas. Um, I'll even take it down to the neck. Sometimes though, it's a little too strong for the neck. 
This is a very thin area. It's almost like the skin around our eyes. So be careful with this. We have a, a peptide um, retinol neck treatment that's a lot more tolerable. But anyways, press it onto the big parts of my face. And then again, I like to do that little butter kind of spreading on toast action and just kind of get it on. So similar to your vitamin C application, you just want to be, just get it into the skin and spread. We don't want to like flood the skin with retinol, right? Um, and the great thing is we have three different potencies. We have 0.3% if you're new to retinol, 0.5% for when your skin has primed with 0.3 and then full strength 1%. However, if you feel like you've used um, you know, a really strong retinol before and you're new to our retinol, you don't have to start with 0.3, right? You know your skin best. So you can definitely start with maybe a 0.5% or 1%. 1 After your retinol, if you have other actives or sorry, other serums, go ahead and apply those from thinnest to thickest and then end with your moisturizer. Yeah, hopefully that answers a lot of the questions with retinol. Happy to talk about more of like the mechanism of action, how it works, if, 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 uh, those are questions too. <laughs> Perfect. And then kind of like segueing into the next question, uh, Mindy asked, if you add a moisturizer after putting on retinol at night, does the retinol get diluted? No, not at all. Um, in fact, you know, retinol in itself is, is such a potent ingredient uh, as long as you get it onto the skin first. You know, another question is like, how long do you have to wait between applications? Um, I would say maybe just a little bit, like 30 seconds, apply your retinol, wait 30 seconds, like to just like fan my skin for a little bit. And then I'll apply my moisturizer or my serums. It's not going to get diluted. Just give it a little bit. Um, we also recommend if you want to try something else with your retinol, if you've been kind of sensitive to it, you can always do a few other methods. So there's a method known as the retinol sandwich, uh, where you apply your moisturizer, then a layer of retinol, then a layer of moisturizer. So kind of like a, a retinol little sandwich to really increase tolerability or mix your retinol with your moisturizer to provide a little bit of a buffer if you need it. So if you mix them together like that, you will buffer it a little bit, but it'll still get into the skin. But it does make for a more um, tolerable experience if you're feeling like you're having some of the itchiness, flakiness, rawness, but you still want to get the retinol on. Um, that's a great, great option. But yeah, if you just do layering, you're not going to, you're not going to buffer it. I can, I can perfect, uh, personally vouch for the retinol triple lipid combo. That's yeah. Like Go to almost every night. Love it. <laughs> so good. It's, and you know, the retinol scaries, I will say that period of time, it's called, it has a name. It's called retinization. So your skin literally is just not used to like how many new skin cells are being like promoted and created. And you're just like, your skin's almost like raw and going into like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And then you can start to see some of the dryness and the irritation and the redness and the itchiness. It's just discomfort. A lot of people and patients push through that, which is like, you totally can. I can't. There's no way I can push through that. If my skin is itchy and red, like I will stop. But we want to get our skin completely through that process because that's where, that's the other side, right? Where we start to see those beautiful results, the glow when our skin is fully used to it. Um, so if you can, I would say push through it a little bit, use triple lipid restore 242 to help shorten that adjustment period. Or when you're starting to feel a little of that discomfort, try the retinol sandwich or the mixing of the triple lipid and retinol just to kind of push through. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Betts is asking about cleansers. Does your cleanser really matter as it is on your skin for such a short period of time? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, you know, there's mixed reviews about this. However, I will say that I like to use cleansers according to my skin type. So I would say textures um, and ingredients. So for example, there is a difference between an oil cleanser and a creamy cleanser and a foaming cleanser and a cleanser with glycolic acid. It feels different on the skin, right? So I love active cleansers at nighttime. I love um, softer cleansers in the morning. For example, if anybody on this call has ever tried our glycolic, uh, renewal cleanser, you guys that I always kind of like divot from that. I just got it in and started using it again. And I'm telling you when I apply this cleanser, I feel 
things happening. And I like to leave it on for like 10 minutes for like a little glycolic kind of like mask. And then I'll rinse it off. And I swear my skin is so glowy. So there are visible differences after you use a specific cleanser if it's active. Um, for example, glycolic 10 Renew Overnight is one of those cleansers that's like almost like a little mini peel while you're using it. So, you know, yes and no, depending on the type of cleanser. I'm not super hung up on a cleansing step. If you have a foaming cleanser that you love and you've been using it forever and it does the job, fantastic. We just want to make sure we're removing the day, removing excess oil, dirt, makeup, which all of our products, all of our cleansers do, um, and prepping the skin so that it can absorb the products uh, fully, right? So I'm not uh, hung up on that. You touched on it a little bit in your presentation, but Sarah is wondering what products she can use to help calm redness in the skin. We have so many products in this category and they would be again under the corrective kind of umbrella. Um, so under redness, I would say phytocorrective gel to hydrate and soothe, bring down the redness in the skin. I would also say our phytocorrective essence mist such an easy way to offer that touchless redness reduction. Instantly hydrates, instantly brings down redness, supports the skin barrier. Um, both of those are great options. I keep phytocorrective essence mist like at my desk. Um, another option would be our Phyto uh, A plus brightening treatment, which is a moisturizer. I definitely would say it's more for skin that is prone to redness, but also has maybe oily skin, out of balance skin, some breakouts, rough texture uh, that needs brightening in a gentle way. Um, that's a great option as well. And I think just applying enough hydration, making sure you're using products that are not going to uh, trigger your skin to become more red um, is a great, a great key as well, right? Knowing your triggers, staying away from things that kind of irritate the skin and make it more reactive. But of course, adding those ingredients, the phytobotanical blend really brings down redness in the skin. So you'll find that in all of the products that are green in color, <laughs> which is hard. To, you, you can't miss it. Um, and then lastly, resveratrol. Resveratrol BE really helps with redness and, and blotchiness actually. So really nice. Um, so we have some questions about some ancillary products. Yeah. Um, so let me see. I want to give credit to who it goes to. Leah is asking if you could just explain the lip repair product for her. Yes, we didn't cover that. Um, antioxidant lip repair is a lip cream. So it's not like a gloss or a balm. It's a very unique type of texture. It's like a moisturizer for your lips, essentially. It absorbs really quickly, really fast. I like to use it throughout the day, especially during this time of year. Dry lip season is here, you guys. Like it's dry cracked lip season. So a really great way to combat that. You can layer it with other products. So you apply your antioxidant lip repair, then maybe you apply your balm or your lipstick for the day or whatever it is. Um, you can apply that at the end of your routine, at the beginning, like wherever you want to apply it, but it has antioxidants in the formula. It has hyaluronic acid. It helps to replenish lip tissue, help to combat um, dry cracked lips, deeply hydrate and nourish as well. Yeah. And then uh, Jen is asking for the correct product to help with brightening under the eyes. Jen, that's a great question. Uh, we have an eye serum. It is called AOX plus eye gel. You only need to apply it once daily in the morning. And this is a really great product to combat discoloration and darkness around the eyes uh, with a few ingredients. If you remember back to our antioxidant slide, remember that floritin is that antioxidant derived from apple leaves and the bark of apple tree leaves uh, of apple trees, and it helps to brighten discoloration, helps to even that skin tone. It also has vitamin C in the formula, so you get that brightening aspect. It's a very low-dose vitamin C, though, that's safe for the eye area. I believe it's about 5%. Um, and then you have caffeine, too, to help with circulation, and it's a beautiful gel texture. So once daily in the morning, uh, I would like to, I apply it after my vitamin C serum, so I'll just do cleanse tone, and then I'll apply my vitamin C serum, then do my vitamin C eye serum, than the rest of the routine. Awesome. Um, we had a question, so maybe if you could just review, do you use PTOX in the evening? If you're using it, are you using it after retinol and resveratrol? PTOX in the evening is after retinol and resveratrol. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Perfect. Um. Let's see here. 
We had a couple of questions. These are really great questions. And I love to hear when people are like going to their doctors to get procedures done. But yeah. we had a couple of people ask about um, some some good products for pre and post procedure for some some laser resurfacing, like maybe the BBL laser. Yeah. So first and foremost, we always want to consult with the professional that is providing the treatment or the service. But to prep and prime your skin, uh, we always recommend making sure that you're using a vitamin C serum like up until the point of the uh, point of the treatment. Right. You may have the, the provider want you to stop depending on how intense the treatment is everything for like a couple of days. So definitely check with them, but prepping your skin with a vitamin C serum, um, also prepping your skin with actives and exfoliants. So retinol cell cycle catalyst, those two products specifically are going to be great. Uh, discoloration defense. If you're, if you're getting this for discoloration, right? So that would be a great, uh, serum to use in it leading up to that as well. So yeah, discoloration defense, if you're getting the treatment to target discoloration, cell cycle catalyst, if you are getting it or, or retinol, if you're getting it for, um, more of those fine lines, wrinkles and resurfacing type of, uh, benefits, uh, for sure. And then afterwards, vitamin C and sunscreen, protect the skin, really help speed up healing um, and and recovery. But again, run that by your provider, make sure that they're on board uh, with that, but great ways to kind of prep and, and optimize for before and after, depending on what the treatment is. Sandy is wondering if there are any products or ingredients that should not be used when you're using PTOX. Hmm, with PTOX specifically, no, there is nothing that... PTOX can work with any routine. There's awesome. nothing that you have to worry about with PTOX. Um, I will say there are certain ingredients that you don't want to use together typically, and that's like layering on multiple acids or actives you typically want to stay away from. So like you wouldn't layer glycolic 10 renew overnight and blemish and age defense and retinol. Like that would just be so much for the skin. And then we wouldn't re we wouldn't layer vitamin C and retinol. Um, those kind of cancel each other out. And you wouldn't do that anyways, because vitamin C is for daytime, retinol is for nighttime. So it's nice and separated. Awesome. And then there was one more here and I lost my place here real quick. Oh, yes. Um, real quick, just the difference between cell cycle catalyst and blemish and age defense. Yeah, great question. So Cell Cycle Catalyst, again, is that anti-aging exfoliating serum. It's best suitable for all skin types, including sensitive. And it has um, taurine in it uh, that helps to activate cellular energy and also helps to maintain hydration for up to 24 hours and support the skin barrier. It has acids in it, a blend of AHAs and BHAs at very low percentages, um, that help to gently exfoliate dead surface skin cells, right, at different layers. Now, good for everyone, all skin types. Blemish and age defense, however, is going to be uh, recommended for oily to combination skin types and acne-prone skin. So this has AHAs and BHAs in it, salicylic acid, glycolic acid, citric acid at higher percentages, um, this product is one product that I will probably never stop using. I am forever blemish prone. It, it's just, I've accepted it. And so this is that product that really, if you feel a blemish coming on, if you have, uh, blackheads that are super stubborn, you can apply it in just the T-zone, apply it on the blemish, apply it to the full face. If you know that you're getting into that time of the month that maybe you start to see a blemish come out, um, really kind of stronger and more for that oily prone, acne prone skin type. So there are, there is a difference between those two. It's medicated. It has salicylic acid at the higher percentage. So definitely more for acne, uh, and to treat acne where cell cycle catalyst is for everyone, regardless of skin type, even sensitive. Awesome. Before I go into my closing remarks, I was wondering if you could please um, just very quickly review the three antioxidant serums, the CE Ferulic, the Flortin, and the Silymarin, and which product is good for which skin type or concern? Gotcha. Yes. Most asked question. So we have our CE Ferulic, Floritin CF, and Silymarin CF. All of them have vitamin C and ferulic acid. Remember that. CE ferulic is best for aging skin, experiencing fine lines and wrinkles, 
Our Floritin CF is best for aging skin concerned with discoloration or uneven skin tone. And then we have Silymarin CF, best for aging skin, oily skin, and blemish prone skin. So key differences between the three. Um, I also want to extend extend a thank you to Corey as always for <laughs> navigating the ins and outs of skin SkinCeuticals and what to use when. I feel like it's one of the most asked questions we get here at Lovely Skin. So thank you so much for educating us on that. Um, I also want to just say that if you have any additional questions about SkinCeuticals products, you can contact our customer care department. We get trained, edu like have regular education from the SkinCeuticals team and Corey herself. So customer care at lovelyskin.com, they'd be happy to answer any additional questions you have. Um, thank you again, Corey, so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. And I hope the rest of your week goes really well. Thanks, everyone. Have fun applying your skincare tonight. <laughs>